Hello everyone, Steven here from Rattle Essence with another fragrance review and this time we have a fragrance from the niche fragrance house of Keiko Mascheri and the fragrance is called A Fleur de Peau. Keiko Mascheri is a niche perfumer that has been around for well over a decade so she has a great deal of experience and this is a fragrance that was released in 2002 and it's a leather fragrance for women. Um, of course, there are a few other websites online where it is marketed as a unisex release. I do think that a bit of the floral notes do, uh, do tend to make this fragrance lean more in the direction of it being a uh, women's release, um, but again, to each his own. So, a fleur de peau, and please excuse my French pronunciation or probably in this case mispronunciation, but it is a name that translates to the English of flower of leather or it could also mean leather florals or skin florals uh, because from what I'm given to understand peau is a French word that could either mean skin or leather depending on the context in which it is used uh, whereas queer c-u-i-r means strictly leather so uh, leather florals or a flower of leather and this is a fragrance whose name I would say is a pretty clear indication as to how it smells you do get a great deal of the leather um, but you also get a few florals. Iris being probably the most concentrated one, but there is another one in there uh, which really makes this one lead more in the direction of the feminine crowd. Uh, now, it's not just about the leather. Yes, that is an animalic nuance in this fragrance, but I detect a few other animalic nuances. Uh, for example, I do get civet, and I also get a great deal of musk, um, which is uh, more evident in the base of this fragrance, I would say, so it's probably used as a fixative, Again, it could just be an accord, a few other ingredients working together to give off that impression, but my nose is certainly picking up on a little bit of musk, so I would say that that is the case in this fragrance, being that it is a leather fragrance and uh, many leather-based fragrances do contain musk. Now, I do think the leather works in a very particular way in this fragrance, and that's just an exemplification of Keiko Mascheri's creativity. And I'm happy to say that this isn't the only medium through which she has chosen to express her creativity, that being perfumery. Uh, she's also a pianist, she plays the piano, and uh, she's a painter. And I can say that I'm also mu a musician. I have been playing the guitar and have been receiving formal instruction in the guitar for uh, 10 years now, and I have dabbled in painting myself. Uh, so one thing that I can say that those three creative mediums have in common is that they're all fully well capable of evoking a different type of an emotional response, triggering an emotional response, or calling forth an emotion. And uh, the emotion that this fragrance calls forth, in many cases being that, you know, perfume can be used as a mood enhancer, a spirit lifter, or uh, a pick-me-up, is the emotion that it calls forth is one of sophistication, but at the same time one of playfulness. And I think that both of those are attributed to the sweet characteristics in this fragrance that are uh, attributed to the amber and the ylang ylang, but also the animalic qualities because of the leather. I would say that the animalic qualities give it more character in the uh, sophisticated department, whereas the sweeter characters or characteristics of this fragrance add more to the playfulness of the fragrance. But anyways, with that being said, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the smell later on, but next up we have the presentation for A Fleur de Peau by Kiko Mascheri. Here we have the presentation for A Fleur de Peau by Keiko Mascheri. Uh, first up we have the box and the first thing that you'll notice about it or the first thing that I noticed about it is this beautiful texture here on the front. It almost reminds me of papyrus and I can say that this um, feels a lot like cotton. It doesn't feel like strictly cardboard. It feels like it's a blend of cardboard and cotton which actually has a really nice texture and a feel to it. Uh, the middle portion here of course is strictly cardboard it has this nice beautiful white border on it that's very reminiscent of a picture frame. Uh, you have the name of the fragrance here in the middle, the concentration and the size down at the bottom. And then here all the way down at the bottom we have the name of the fragrance uh, house and it also happens to be the name of the uh, Japanese American perfumer and it's embossed in there in a beautiful lustrous gold finish. You have the lot number and the UPC code here at the uh, bottom over here at the top. Again the name of the house, nothing going on at the sides. But on the back here, you have the ingredients and the name of the house one more time. And that's pretty much it for the box. As far as the bottle goes, 
uh, you have this really nice cap that swivels in place but clicks into place very securely. It's kind of reminiscent of a golf ball, just looks much classier than that. The atomizer actually works very well um, given the nature of the composition and the concentration which is Eau de Parfum. Here in this ni nice little square overlay we have the name of the fragrance and uh, we also have the name of the house down here at the bottom in a really nice unique shape on the bottle very well done uh, just bear in mind that it uh, the fragrance was once called Fleur de Pau not a Fleur de Pau um, but it still smells the same it's just the name change they got rid of the A whatever the reason may be but anyway that was the presentation for a Fleur de Pau by Keiko Macheri now as far as the way this fragrance smells um, upon the initial application one thing that you're going to notice is that this one is very potent um, as soon as you take the cap off the atomizer, you're just going to be able to smell the florals and they're very in your face and in demand. Um, it's very powerful. Once you apply it, really you don't need any more than two sprays of this stuff, which is really unlikely considering that, you know, with a floral fragrance, um, you really need to over apply because floral notes, although they are constituted as mid notes in many fragrances, they are pretty volatile. Um, that's not the case in this fragrance. I she must be doing something with her fixatives that really prolong the duration or the longevity of this fragrance because it performs very well. In the opening, you are gonna get the leather note. Um, the leather note does appear to be very concentrated, but it's coupled with an iris note. So you have uh, the animalic nuance attributed to the leather and of course the civet, um, but then you also get a bit of the clean soapy aspect of the iris. Now, I would say that the iris could have potentially made this fragrance very unisex. Um, but of course, there is also a bit of a lang, -lang in this composition. And the lang, lang is of course a yellow floral and what it does is it gives it a mild sweetness. Uh, yes, it does amp it up in the feminine department, uh, making this one smell a bit too feminine for my taste personally. Uh, nevertheless, I do appreciate the composition and its smell for what it is and I think it is a pretty, pretty neat uh, creative representation, but it's a beautiful leather fragrance for women. So I will just leave it at that. Now, there is a mild sweetness in the opening. As the fragrance dries down, uh, the sweetness I think becomes a bit more evident uh, because there's a um, an amber note in this fragrance. And of course, amber gives it a resinous feel, but it also gives it that mild sweetness um, that many people do associate with uh, fragrances containing amber. Now, there's also... Uh, I would say a very mild woody base. I did spray this on my hand about a half hour ago, so I'm pretty well into the dry down, I would say. And I'm getting, uh, you know, there is a bit of a citrus uh, feel in the opening of this fragrance, which would contribute to the sweetness as well. I believe it's tangerine or mandarin orange, but it's a very, you know, like a sweet orange type of feeling that you get in this fragrance. As it dries down, I would say the animal qualities of this fragrance seem to come forward a bit more as well. Um, I'm also getting a great deal of civet uh, from this composition and a, a bit of musk. And the leather note, even though it's so strong in the opening of this fragrance, is very evident even in the dry down of this fragrance. So that's one thing that I can say that I really appreciate about this composition, especially considering that it's marketed as a leather fragrance. Um, it's hard to say that a fragrance is either leather based or citrus based when that ingredient doesn't necessarily persist throughout the entire duration of the composition. Uh, whereas in this case, even though the leather note isn't very um, volatile, so it doesn't evaporate, it's still very strong in the opening. So it's, it's not only the star player, but it's also the backbone of this fragrance. And uh, the iris note, I would say, doesn't stick around uh, for the whole duration of this fragrance. So you get a great deal of the amber in the base. Uh, you also get uh, mild woody elements in the base. Can't really pinpoint exactly what is going on as far as the woods in this fragrance go. But I would say the most concentrated notes in this composition are, of course, the leather, the iris, and the alang alang. The uh, citrus note in this fragrance is kind of fleeting, so I won't really go into detail about that. But certainly those are the three more uh, most concentrated notes. And uh, with that being said, let's move on to the rating for A Fleur de Pau by Keiko Macheri. Now, as far as the rating goes for A Fleur de Pau by Keiko Macheri, first up we have uniqueness and overall smell. And this fragrance earned for me a seven out of 10. 
Uh, this is a unique smell in the sense that the leather note isn't really the leather that you would expect from many other leather-based fragrances or fragrances containing leather in the sense that it doesn't smell generic or conventional. It's uh, instead coupled with a few other animalic notes which really add depth, character, and personality to the composition. And of course, it's coupled, but again contrasted by floral notes in this fragrance which have a very different nature but they work together very well. So I would say that this is a great smell for uh, an older, mature, confident woman, uh, but I can see a younger crowd pulling this off as well, but again, you have to be mature, so I would say 25 and older. Next up, we have Longevity, and this fragrance earned from me a nine out of 10. This is an Eau de Parfum concentration, but it has lasted eight to 10 hours on my skin, so I would say that that is above average, so very well done, fantastic performance. Uh, next up, we have Projection, and the projection of this fragrance is ungodly. I gave this fragrance a 10 out of 10 uh, strictly because as soon as you take the cap off the atomizer it just fills up the room and I was really taken aback because it's the first time that a fragrance has ever done that on me but it just performs so well and um, even when you spray it on your skin it's very easy to over apply with this one so please bear that in mind I probably wouldn't put any more than three sprays but it is a light colored liquid uh, so feel confident spraying this on a lighter shirt and next up we have uh, Versatility, and I gave this fragrance a 9 out of 10. Uh, the only point I took off is because, yes, many online retailers or sellers of this product do market it as a unisex fragrance, but it is a women's fragrance, uh, so please bear that in mind. It does lean more in the direction of the feminine crowd, uh, but again, it is very appropriate for um, hotter weather, like the spring and the summer, uh, just because the floral notes in this fragrance are very evocative of the spring and the summer. Um, but again, the animalic nuances uh, really offer a nature that's appropriate for the fall season as well. Again, I don't think this one is very appropriate for the winter season, uh, just because of the nature of the composition. Although the performance, I think, would be able to endure the harsh, cold uh, conditions of the cooler weather, uh, but I think the nature of the composition just wouldn't work in the winter very well. But again, if you over apply, I think this one would serve very well in the winter, uh, but it's available, not available, but it's accessible, I would say, for a whole bunch of social scenarios. I can see this one being a signature scent. Again, if you're a confident, mature woman and you're very comfortable in your own skin, and I can see this one being uh, worn semi-formally, formally, and on a night out because of the uh, playful characteristics of this fragrance. And then last up, we have presentation. Already told you how I feel about that. And I ended up giving this fragrance an 8 out of 10 for presentation. Um, I do think the bottle is a bit bulky, so if you're traveling with that, you might have to decant it. But again, it is a beautiful bottle, and uh, a lot of attention was paid not to just the bottle, but the box itself. The only thing that really changes uh, from bottle to bottle, they do all look alike, uh, but the only thing that changes is really the label on the front, different name, and I believe the color of the bottle changes uh, depending on the collection that it's uh, part of. This is actually one of the cheaper collections. Uh, but nevertheless, beautiful bottle, beautiful box, classy, and elegant, I would say. And uh, I gave it an 8 out of 10 for presentation, and then that earns this fragrance an overall mark of 8.6 out of 10. So there you have it. That was my review of A Fleur de Pot by Keiko Mascheri. As always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. Again, this has been Stephen with another fragrance review from Adolescence. Thanks for watching.